Number 21. A 60 kilogram and a 90 kilogram skydiver jump from an airplane at an altitude of 6,000 meters, both falling in a head first position. Make some assumption about their frontal areas and calculate their terminal velocities. All right, so let's do that first. So I have two pictures detailed here um, one for the 60 kilogram person, one for the 90. And basically, right, if they're skydiving, their weight will be pulling them down towards the earth. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Now remember, their weights are a function of their mass. Right, so I can calculate the weight of each of these individuals, right? So the weight here should be 60 times 9.80. So the weight of the 60 kilogram person should simply be 60 times 9.8. And we get 588. So 588 newtons. And then we can also do the same thing here for the 90 kilogram person. So it's 90 multiplied by 9.8. And the weight now of the 90 kilogram person will be 882. Okay, so we've got 882 newtons. Great. Now remember, uh, we're trying to find the terminal velocity. What do you know about the acceleration at terminal velocity? It's zero, right? Terminal velocity means your velocity is now constant. So therefore, the acceleration is equal to zero in both of these cases, in both of these uh, free body diagrams, right? So what does that mean in terms of the forces in the y direction? They're balanced, right? They have to be balanced. There's no net force. So therefore, the counteracting force, the drag force that is, that points upward on the 60 kilogram person will be, guess what? Equal in magnitude to the weight, but just of opposite sign. So the weight here should be, right, negative. I'm just not going to put it in yet because I'm giving the direction in terms of the vector. Uh, this one should be positive, right, 588 newtons. Great. And then what about the same, what about the 90 kilogram person? That's the same, right? So the Drag force on the 90 kilogram person is equal to 882 newtons. All right, very good. So that takes care of that. Now, if we're trying to find terminal velocity, recall the drag formula that involves velocity. Okay, it's right over here on the right-hand side, so let's write that down. It says the drag force will be equal to one-half of the uh, drag coefficient multiplied by the density of the fluid that the object is moving in multiplied by the surface area of the object um, in that fluid that's facing the fluid, I should say, multiplied by its velocity squared. So now uh, to do this for, you know, we can do this now for two, both of them uh, individually. I'm going to set up the other one as well in a different color. One half CPA V squared. And now let's just start plugging in some values. So we do know the, the um, drag force, right, at terminal velocity. It's 588 for the 60 kilogram person. Multiply by one half. Now, what's the drag coefficient? Well, it says that he falls in a head-first position. I look at my table over here on the upper right-hand side, but I realize there is no head-first. So uh, I talked about this, you know, in, in number 20 more in depth. I'm just going to choose the feet-first position. If you want to know my rationale, check out video 21. Uh, excuse me, video 20. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the value of 0 0.7 here. All right, the density of the fluid, we'd have to know that. The density of air is 0 0.1, what was it, 0 0.121 uh, kilogram per meter per meter cubed. That is the value that you would be expected to, I don't know, necessarily know it or memorize it, but you you may, I don't know. But you'd want to, uh, you, all you'd have to do is just look that value up. Okay, so we have that value in there. Now the surface area, and it says make an assumption. Well, the assumption I'm going to make is what we used in the in question number 20. All right, that the that the surface area here is equal to uh, 0 0.140 square meters. Okay, so that I'm going to plug in as 0 0.140, and then it's just now multiplied by v squared. So how do I solve this equation? I just gotta right calculate all the values together. So five, so 588 will equal. So we do 0 0.5 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.121 times 0.14. And we get a value of, we get a value of, here we go. So this is zero point, hold on one second. Oh, nope, made one mistake there. I apologize, guys. The density, I missed it by decimal because I'm looking at my answer. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound reasonable. Uh, hold on one second, go back. This is not the density of air, silly willy. So should you memorize it? Well, I guess I don't have it memorized, apparently. <laughs> so the density over here is going to be, um, 1.21, sorry about that. 
1.21 kilogram per meter squared or meter, nope, meter cubed because it's a volume. All right, so now let's recalculate that. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.7 times 1.21 times 0.14. So we get a value of 0 0.0593, 593 V squared, right? Divide this out, 593. 0 0.0.5, 0 .5, uh, 0, oh boy, 0 0.0593, there we go, and calculate that, 588 over 0 0.0593, we get about, uh, what do we get here, about 9,915, but we got a round, so 20, take the square root of both sides, so now V will equal second square root of 9920. And we get a value of about uh, 100, basically, right? 100 meters per second. Okay, that's for the 60 kilogram person. Now we would do the same thing for the 90 kilogram person, all right? All of these values are the same. The only value that now changes is gonna be the uh, drag force, okay? I'm not gonna write it all out, but you do the calculation the exact same way. All right, I'm going to give you though the answer, so I'm gonna just do it in the calculator quickly. So it's basically 882 divided by 0 0.5 times 0 0.7 times 1.21 times 0.14. All right, and then we're gonna square root that result. So we get 122 now, 122 meters per second. All right, wait a minute, I thought that objects with this, you know, different masses fall at the same, you know, rates and one doesn't fall faster than the other. Yes, yes, if we neglect air resistance, but that's not the reality. Right? The reality is heavier objects assuming air resistance do fall at faster rates, all right? But that is only assuming with uh, air resistance present. So uh, now we have the two values here and that takes care of the first part, right? And the second part was, uh, it says now, if we continue reading, how long does it take? So in terms of time, how long does it take for each skydiver to reach the ground, assuming the time to reach terminal velocity is small? Now, in order to really do this, we'd have to figure out, you know, formulas uh, that deal with, you know, how, that basically deal with uh, reaching terminal velocity as a function of time, all right? And we'd have to do some upper level math. But uh, what they're telling us is to assume that the time to get to terminal velocity is small, and what that means is that I'm going to assume that we get right to terminal velocity. All right, we get we get right there. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me now do that math. Or I mean, the other assumption I'm just trying to think. The other assumption might be to you know assume no air resistance, calculate the time it does take to get to terminal velocity, and then calculate the remaining amount of time. I don't really know which they're you know after. Assuming the time to reach terminal velocity is small. I don't really know. You could do it either way. So so look, you can go from you can go V initial of zero to then for the 60 kilogram person, 100 all right, meters per second. And remember that the gravitational force is negative 9.80. All right. And then you find the time here. OK. And then what you do and you'd also have to find the distance. All right. And then knowing the total distance that you covered getting to that uh, speed, you'd have to subtract that value from 6,000 to find the remaining distance. And then you would use the constant 100 meters per second over the remaining distance to find the remaining time, and then you would add up the times. All right, that's fine. Uh, but I, I don't know if that's what they want us to do here. I'm not really sure. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that we reach, you know, terminal velocity right away. Um, but I did give you, again, the method to solve it in case you... Uh, you need to do it that way. So let's just say we got to go. So the velocity here, right, is 100 meters per second. The, uh, the sorry, the distance, right, of the displacement is going to be 6,000. So I'm assuming that the velocity is constant the whole time. So I can simply calculate by using V is equal to D over T. So the velocity is 100. The distance would be 6,000 over time, right? So time here is simply equal to... Uh, 6,000, right, divided by 100, which should simply be what? 60, right? 60 seconds. That's for the 60-kilogram uh, person. Now, we would do it for the 90-kilogram person, and same thing. V is equal to D over T. 
The velocity is 122 this time. The, dis the distance is 6,000 meters. And the time it takes to cover that distance would be 6,000 6, over 122. And we get about 49, 49.2 seconds. So obviously it should take less time for this heavier object, assuming that you know, there's air resistance and drag forces in the problem. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please do remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.